Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Tea Time. Today's topic comes from, let's see if I can, let's see if I can do this. Ah, OP. All right, sick. Uh, is there any information about the Core Plus? Comes from Brooke8128. Uh, 30 posts on Team Liquid. I think all of them are in the Core thread. <laughs> uh, yes. Thank you very much for being active in the core thread and um, hanging out with us and things like that. So um, for those of you who don't uh, already know, the concept is that we will have a new organization of the way that we do the core. We will have the core light, which is on the left side of the keyboard for right-handed users. Uh, so it's the normal, more comfortable, easier to learn, but not quite as efficient as the core. Actually, not a, not as efficient a, a, as the core by a long shot, because you know, you know. And if you don't, go watch the video, um, the first core video. So the second main section is the core, you know, standard. And then there's the core plus. So what is what's the core plus? Core plus was a project that originally that we did by doing some sneaky stuff in the. Um, Uh, doing some sneaky stuff in the text file of the hotkeys so that we could do things like make morph drone equal control D instead of T. And you say, well, why would you want to do that? Well, if you could do that, you can't anymore, but if you could do that, um, you'd have uh, less chances of accidentally overlapping with, um, with other things, with... Um, with queens, accidentally making queens, accidentally getting hatchery upgrades because you tried to build something with your larva that wasn't there. Um, so, there's that. Oh wait, no, no, that's not how it work. You'd have to do it the other way around. You'd have to make the, the upgrades. Yeah, so you'd have to make the upgrades with the modifier, with control, or shift, or control shift. Um, actually, that would work out a lot better too because you do a lot more often. Anyway, you can't do that anymore. Ugh. It would be great if you could, but you can't do that anymore. Um, that got patched out, I think, in like patch 1.5.3. 1 .4. One of the one of the 1.5 patches that got patched out, uh, as did a lot of uh, text file editing in general that was uh, allowed, let's say. Um, so the Core Plus is, is was a project we, we started up and then it just ended up sort of never go uh, off the ground. Uh, and then recently, uh, thank you to Liquid Rep, we discovered that you can do some really, really cool stuff um, by moving the keys around the keyboard. And I said, well, you know, I'm not really comfortable doing that with the core because I want to make sure it's always legal and stuff. And Liquid Rep's like, yeah, that's, that's totally fine. It's totally legal. And um, I've done it in tournaments. So I was like, all right. If it's good enough for Rhett, it's good enough for me. And uh, I did check the user license agreement in terms of service, and uh, it seems clean, it seems fine. One key to one action is the main thing. Control, it's not that we're making control work as multiple, like control two, you know. We're not making one button work as two buttons. We're just moving where the, the location of the buttons are on the keyboard, which is fine. So. Uh, I've got my Razer Black Widow Tournament Edition right here. Ugh, excellent. So this is going to be hard to imagine without a keyboard, and it's going to be really hard to imagine if you don't use the core. So we've got the keyboard, right? Here we are. Now uh, we have... Let's, let's do it this way. Yeah. So we got Control, Shift, and Alt. Those are our three modifiers, right? Press those with the thumb in combination with all the keys over here, right? Now, what we can do is we can have, control is what we're gonna press to add things to control groups because we can control click add to control group and we don't have to do multiple things. Um, we take three actions and turn them into two actions um, because you just hold control down the whole time. Um, so, since we're not using shift as often, we're using control more often. We can move control over here to the home row because that's where your thumb rests, right? And then this is really, oh wait, does it work like that? Yeah. So 
like this, right? So thumb is now control. Cool, that's cool. Um, we can also make uh, this shift instead of this. So instead of having to, to have your thumb over here and reach out like that, which is a little bit less comfortable, you can bring it in, bring it in a little bit, and it's kind of nice. And obviously this looks weird because my hand is like cocked in a weird direction, but you'll have to, you know. Um, and then, uh, so we have control shift, and then we can have alt right here. So what that does is allows us to press control shift with the thumb, control alt with the thumb, and uh, if you're really fancy, you can actually do uh, shift alt as well. So it gives us all the combinations of modifiers in addition to the individual modifiers themselves, which allows for six total combinations. And that lets us do some really, really cool stuff that we weren't able to do before. Uh, for example, we can have control alt, which is now here, and J I O and P, J I O and P, be your cameras. So four camera locations without moving your fingers up and down. Really cool, right? Um, we couldn't do that before because we couldn't, we didn't have access to the control alt combination, but now we do. So now we have enough modifier combinations to allow that to happen, which is really neat. And you can just use alt to recall. No problems. Doesn't run into any sort of issues like shift uh, does. Mostly the combinations with shift are the ones we're trying to avoid. Therefore, control alt being useful, right? Um, and that's kind of the main gist of it. It's really, um, I won't get too deep into it because it would take me forever uh, to remember everything. I have to like take time and prep and basically make the core plus hotkey layout. And I haven't done that yet. And the reason why I haven't done that yet is because I need to spend time on other projects, um, namely Tutorial Central, because I have a I have a deadline at the end of the year of many, many views to hit, and I'm very far away, and it's scary, and I have to put as much time into that as possible. Um, the other things in the Core Plus that we're doing, so the main thing in the Core Plus is that it's not going to make sense unless you move your modifiers around. Uh, and you can do that with sharp keys, um, you can do that with auto hotkey. Uh, what we suggest is actually a combination of both, because auto hotkey doesn't interact well with StarCraft. Um, so what you can do is auto hotkey plus StarCraft pretty much doesn't work. We tried it a million different ways. But what we can do is we can use sharp keys. Now, sharp keys is on all the time, right? As soon as you boot up your computer, it's a registry hack. It's on all the time. So for instance, my shift is always, 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 always the list key. The list key is actually my Windows key, the list key, one of those keys. It's always my shift, no matter what. I made that that change uh, using sharp keys. But um, what you what you do is you say, okay, sharp keys enable <sighs> weird setup that works with StarCraft well. But you don't want the weird. You want to be able to press shift and press capital buttons when you're outside of the game itself. So what you can do is you set up an auto hotkey script that will only activate when StarCraft is not the active window. And that was discovered by, or figured out rather, by, by Jeremy, Jeremy Nindry, Nindry Jeremy. Awesome, awesome, Zerg, good friend. Um, and then on top of that, we'll do, we're gonna do also basically, we're gonna use the Core Plus as this area where we just do all the things we really wanted to do, but we were like, no, no, it's too crazy. No, people will freak out, just no. Ugh. That was a real yarn. I couldn't. I couldn't stop it. I tried. I don't know if you saw my face or not. I tried to stop it, for the good of the show. But the show must go on. So, uh, one of the crazy things that we'll be doing, for example, is having different hotkeys for lift off and land, depending on whether or not um, it's in the air, right? Because the way hotkeys work is through command cards. When you look into the bottom right, you see a command card. That's the thing that you never click, never ever click it. Um, so you can have as many conflicts as you want with other command cards, but you can't have conflicts within a single command card. And the production for Terran has two command cards, one for when it's lifted, one for when it's not. 
So we have to do this really fun little logic puzzle to figure out the most efficient way to bind uh, keys for units and um, reactors and things like that. I don't know why. I don't know why. This is coffee. It's caffeinated. I have no idea. I slept well. I slept pretty much on time. I might have went to bed like a half an hour later. Whatever. I should be fine. Maybe I'm just, maybe I just have a very high soft palate. I don't know. In any case. Um, so that you got the two command cards. And so in order to get everything working, you can't make any conflicts with either command card for the two add-ons and lift off and land because they're linked. Well, they're, they're linked to the mind of the user. Um, to be the same, you want lift off and land to be the same. You want reactor to be the same in the air as it is on the ground because it's easy to learn that way. Uh, well, with the Core Plus, we've, we've gotten rid of any, any tiny bastions of hope of, of, okay, we're gonna do this little thing to make it easier to learn. We've like 100%, like the core is 99% there, and in the core plus, we just like take away that last 1% that you're hanging on to and you know, let you fall off the cliff and into the water. And you realize it's very deep and beautiful and wonderful and there's a coral reef, but not in a damaging way to your body. You, know, you don't land on it, you can go explore it, scuba dive and things like that. Basically, the, you know, that's what the core is, the core plus. Um, so yeah, different, different hotkeys for the, um, the lift off and land actually make it um, better. Who would have thought? It actually makes, makes the core layout more efficient if we use different keys. And with the, the, the lifting off and landing, you know, when it's in the air, you can make those keys awesome because the only things you have to worry about, you don't even have to worry about attack is building some attack in the air, um, is the move, stop, patrol, uh, and hold position. And you, we don't use move at all. Um, and actually, personally, I don't use stop at all. I only use hold position. I don't have stop in my personal layout. Um, but in any case, there's not a lot of conflicts there, so you can make those keys really nice. You can even make really cool key combination type things. One of the one of my wish wish lists for Blizzard. I think I'm gonna make a video series. I I was gonna make it on here, but I think I'm gonna try to spruce it up and get it to the quality standards of Tutorial Central and um, and make it so that um, there's a delay right between when a building lifts off and when you can access the land button. I don't know why there's that delay. You should be able to lift off and land right away, right? Just like that, right? But you have to go, wait, waiting. Waiting is something that StarCraft players aren't supposed to do. If you're waiting, you're doing it wrong. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, talk to them about that, find out why it's there, because I'm sure it's for a good reason. Uh, and then maybe if I'm feeling particularly persuasive, be like, hey, Maybe we could make that delay a little bit smaller. Maybe we could make that delay pretty much not exist. I don't know. All right, so people for the core, core talk is pretty much over, just so that you know. Moving on to BlizzCon. I am gathering together. I am gathering together questions uh, for an interview uh, that I'm going to try and acquire with... Um, someone that is working on the multiplayer design of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. I'm going to try to get that interview. And there's going to be tons of people talking about long-term strategies for monetization. There's going to be tons of people talking about all those kind of questions that everybody's like, what about in-game clan systems? What about making the interface more social? What about you know, having a big chat channel when you go in, why is there so much unused space in the UI? Can we improve the UI? You know, all those kind of things that people have been like badgering Blizzard about for um, years now. I'm going to avoid all of those questions because someone's already going to ask them and I don't think that's very interesting. So what I'm going to do, um, perhaps to my detriment, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask all of the questions uh, that I don't see other people asking. Uh, things like, why can you shift Q a tank to unsiege, move, and then resiege, but you can't do it with a swarm host? 
I know the answer, like, like literally why, you know, I know how it works. It's, you know, because because of the delay. There's a delay, a delay there. There's a delay between when you can rally, uh, lift off, you know, um, and land. There's a delay between when you can unburrow, when you have access to the burrow option. So ideally, we would have the no delay system that the tank has, and so that we can even unburrow the swarm host, move it, burrow, and set a rally point for the locusts. So it does all that by itself. Um, and, and different things like that. Those are the kinds of questions that I'll be asking. Um, I will be making a video series on Tutorial Central. <laughs> um, I don't know how interesting I can make it. If it's not interesting enough, I'll just do it here. But if, if I can find, I don't even know, you know, because it's just sort of me talking about the way certain mechanics work, and I guess it might be mildly interesting. In any case, let's try it, right? We'll try it, we'll see if people wanna watch it, we'll see if it gets views on the Tutorial Central, or if people are just like, what are you doing? Give me more bronze science, and then I will supply more bronze science. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're gonna give that a try. A lot of different little mechanical things, like uh, the control group bug for drops and nidises and things like that. So I'm gonna be going into detail on each one of those things. We're gonna call it Jack's Legacy of the Void wish list or something like that. And hopefully, once I get to talk with a uh, multiplayer uh, designer for Legacy of the Void, uh, I'll be able to find out and understand why things are the way they are, and be like, oh, hey, everybody, this is why. Isn't it brilliant? Or, hey, you didn't really consider that your minimum scan range uh, is making the attack move function in a random way. Do you think that it would be reasonable to adjust that variable? Um, and that's really easy to do, right? Minimum scan range, it's a variable in the editor, just change it to whatever the, the unit is, plus one, Whew, problem solved. Whole problem is solved. I have to make a video on that, I really do. I, whew, I for, that video is like nearly done. I need to finish that video. <laughs> Ah, that's the issue with having like a hundred videos in the bank, like some of them are really almost done and I forgot about them for a while. I'm like, oh crap, that's right. Right before I moved, I was about to finish that video. So, in any case, thank you all for hanging out, talking, etc. Please, uh, if you have questions that you want me to ask to a multiplayer uh, Legacy of the Void designer uh, that hasn't been asked to death already, and that everyone's not already talking about like insanely all the time, leave them in the comments section below. And, um, and hopefully I'll be able to ask that person there once I get to BlizzCon, which is coming up very soon. Very, very soon, it's coming up. See you at BlizzCon. Oh, this is what my face looks like, and it's going to be at BlizzCon. Say hi to me. I will say hi back to you, promise.